Hi everybody, so today I'm gonna to show you how to do the Paint Over Me kit. So this is the kit, um, let's open it. So in the kit, you'll see um, the postcard from Paint Over Me. It's a picture of their daughter, very cute, doing her first Paint Over Me painting. On the back of this card, there, there are QR codes uh, for um, setup, startup, and a how-to guide. That's that. You'll get six paint colors, um, three primary colors. So red, yellow, and blue, so you can mix whatever color you need. Um, there's white. And then you'll get two colors that match the theme of the painting. So for this painting, the Deer of Nara, we have green and brown. There's a set of paint brushes. There's a palette with wells for the painting, for the paints. Okay, and here's the canvas, nicely wrapped. Okay, let's open this one. Okay, so here's the Deer of Nara. Um, it is printed already, so the image is there, and we're gonna paint over it. It's called Paint Over Me. And then on the bottom there is a cover for your table and an apron. So it's good for kids so that you can contain the mess. Okay, so let's Let's put on the apron. And then we'll put on the table cover. So the table cover has two adhesive strips. So you see that one there? So you wanna peel it. And peel the other side as well. So now, now you can stick it on the table right in front of you. All right, now we're ready. So put the canvas in front of me. I've got some paper towel to dry my brushes between colors. I've got a bucket of water to wash my brush. So for this painting, I think I will start with the deer, the deer right in front. And I'm gonna use this small angled brush, this one here, and one of the pointy brushes for the fine detail. So when I look at the deer, I see some brown, almost pink here, a light pastel brown pink. I see some purple in the shadows and some dark brown and purple in the legs and the ears and the nose. So um, I'm gonna start with white because we're gonna need white in these light colors. Shake the bottle. All right. So you only have to squeeze a little bit at a time, so you don't waste any if you can't use it all up. So a little bit of white. There's a brown tone in this, so I'm gonna squeeze a bit of brown. And it looks like there's it's a little bit pinkish, so I'm gonna put a little bit of red as well. And I keep that separate for now. And over in the shadow there, it's more purpley. So I'm gonna, gonna put a bit of blue so we can mix purple with the red. Okay, and to darken the colors for the darker parts in the legs and the ears, 
I'll put a bit of black. All right. So for a painting like this, that is more nature, um, outdoors, usually I don't keep the colors separate. Like they're not distinct colors. When you look at nature and the painting, the colors are always blended together. There's different shades, it's all mixed in. It's not separate, very distinct. So because I need to mix it, I just um, got a large plate, like a takeout container or a plate or another uh, plastic palette, just to, so that the colors can mix together and I have more surface to work with. Okay, so let's start. When, when I'm painting, I wanna start with the lighter colors first because it's easy to put darker colors in the shadows over the lighter ones instead of the other way around. If you start with dark, it's harder to um, make it light again. So let's start with this body here. I'm gonna use a small round brush. I'll start with white and I'm gonna put the white in on a larger plate. Okay, so as I said, it looks like it's a bit of brown and a bit of pink. So I'm gonna put a bit of brown first, just a little bit, because you can always add more color later. And I don't worry about the colors mixing here because as I said, it's a nature painting, colors are always mixed. So I'm using the same brush. If you find the paint is drying a bit and, or it's too thick, you can add some water to it. Just, just dip your brush in it. Okay, I'm gonna add a bit of red. Okay, and I check what the painting reference it, see if it looks like how you want it. I don't worry about having the colors mix uniformly, homogeneously on, the, on my plate because as I said, the colors are always mixed. It's not solid. Okay, I'm gonna dip my brush in water just to thin it out just a little bit. Okay, let's try it. So from what I see, I think I need a bit more red. It's more pink, the, the canvas is a bit more pink than what I have, so. So you just keep looking at it, see if you need to change and when you're Painting it on, you don't have to paint it smoothly because the purpose of this painting is to create texture. So that it looks like you painted the whole thing, right? So dab it or use the strokes that work with um, the subject. Like this is a deer, it's fur. So you can use fur-like strokes. So um, when I'm painting, I make sure I remember where the darker parts are before I'm covering it. So this is a slightly darker pink here and some brown. So when I see that, I'm gonna leave it there first so I don't forget. And I see that this is a bit more white here. It's, so I'm gonna dip my paintbrush in white. Just gonna add a bit more white so that you can see the dimension in the different colors. And then sort of blend it together, but not um, completely. Now you still wanna see the mixture of the variation in the colors. So here there's a darker pink, but it's like a, like a brown pink, right? Not completely pink. So I'm gonna put a brown in it too. So you, as you can see, I'm, I just keep mixing until I see the color that I want. Okay, so maybe that will work. So there's a dark spot there. It doesn't need to match the painting exactly, but you wanna kind of get it similar because the painting naturally shows where the shadow and the light are shining. So here's a darker part here. So I finished that. There's a bit of brown here. So since I still have the pink and white and kind of brownish color out, I'm gonna look at the painting and see what else I can use it for. So I see that on the head, there's a similar kind of color. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. It's 
a soft pink. As I'm painting, I'm continuously uh, mixing. I'm looking at the painting, looking at my paint. If it needs more pink, I take more red in my brush. If it needs more white, I take the more white from my plate. Okay, I wanna give some highlights to the head, so I'm gonna take some white and then just put it on top where the light is shining. All right, that looks pretty good. Okay, so I think for now I'm done with the pink parts. So I wanna switch the shadow, which is more purple, so I'm gonna wash my brush. Okay, so let's look at it. It's like a purple periwinkle, periwinkle color. So I'm gonna start with blue. I'll put some blue on here. It's, and then some red, because it's purplish actually. I'm gonna mix it up and see if it looks like what I want. Okay, so here's some purple, but I think it needs to be a bit uh, more pastel, so more white, some white. So I put white here, and I kind of mix it on the side to see if it's what I want. Um, so I think this one needs more red in it. So grab some red and just mix it in the middle. So it's closer to what I need, okay? So, so now on my plate, I've got like a lighter purple, um, a medium purple and a darker purple. So I can use all of them as I'm, as I'm doing it. Start with the medium purple here, where the neck is. Okay, so I just go down the leg a bit like this. I'll leave the darker parts first later. So I'm gonna go up the neck. And then in the ears as well. So the ears has some purple. And it's a mixture of purple, red, like it's blotches, right? So still, you can do the same thing, different blotches. thin out um, the painting because I want the colors to blend a little bit more on the edges. So I dipped my brush in water. So it has more of a watercolor effect, just like the painting on the canvas. So I soften the edges here. And I soften the edges uh, between the purple and the pink colors. So I just dipped in water and kind of dabbed. All right. Okay, so I think I'm gonna do the outline on the legs and the ears. It's darker, darker purple and brown. So I'll take some brown, put it on over here. And I've already got some purple. But we need to make it darker, so I'm gonna okay, take some black and mix it in my purple. And this is a fine brush, so I'm just gonna paint just a border here, just like the painting has. And this side of the ear as well.
and on the bottom. We'll add the brown later. Okay, so I'll add the brown parts. The brown has a little bit of red tone as well. So I didn't wash my brush in between the purple and the brown because on the deer itself, it's all mixed up, so. I'm gonna put a bit of dark purple on the nose as well. So we want that to stand out because it, in reality, the nose is more protruded, right? So you want to have that purple. See if you can dab it and leave, and leave some texture on the nose. Okay, I need the eyes as well. Okay, wash my brush. So now I'm going to go over it maybe with white, just to make, um, just to make some parts stand out. And I'll have, I'll thin out the white a little bit. I don't need pure white. I'll just use the whitish parts of my pink plate here. Okay. So there's some white in by the eyes. There's some white here. So just look at your, your uh, painting. Any parts that have more white or light shining, you wanna highlight it just to add more dimension to the painting. If you need more white, get it from your, um, your palette there. And some parts of the leg too, right? That even though it's dark, there are some like white bits in there. Okay. Again, water only. Just to blend the colors a little bit. Ah, and you can also use your paper towel to blend if you want. So I can grab, grab a piece of paper towel. You can wet it a little bit and then wrap it around your finger and you can kind of blend like this. It works really well. That's fun for kids to do too. All right. Okay, so I think I'm done this bigger deer here. I'm satisfied with it. For now, I'll leave the small deer. I think I'm gonna start doing the grass here on the bottom. So I'll wash all my brushes, cause now we're like doing a completely different color palette. We're doing greens and yellows. Okay, I still got my big plate. I'll just leave that color there. Um, so when I look at it, I see brown, I see yellow and I see green. I'll just, you could uh, wash this out, some of it out. But since I have a big plate with me, I'm, I can just squeeze it directly on the plate. I need some yellow. Green. And brown, which I still have some left in here, so I'm gonna use that. Okay. so. These are too bright for a nature, like a bright yellow and bright green. They all have a brown tone in it. So I'm gonna put some brown and mix it with my yellow. See what I get. Okay, and that looks, that looks close to what the painting has. I'm gonna put some brown in the green too. So 
So now I can start painting. And when I'm painting, I can do the yellow and green together. Like you can dip it in yellow, dip it in green, you know, and just dab, dab, dab. And I'm covering the parts that kind of look green first, green and yellow, and then we'll do the more brown and white parts later. Okay, make texture. I'm gonna need some white as well because I'm coming to a point where it's more light green. So I'll put some white here. More white. Yeah, just put it on thick so you can have some texture. And if you're not satisfied with the color, let's say like it's too dark than what you want or the colors are too mixed up than what you want, just leave it to dry and you can add on more layers later. Okay, I think I'll leave that part for now. And I see these parts are more pure brown, pure dark brown. So I'm gonna wash my brush so I can add those. Okay, I'll take some brown. I'll take a bit of black too. Okay, so add the brown parts. There's, the brown is a bit of bit red as well when I look at it. So I just dip my brush in the red and I just dab and mix it in with the brown. So now it's like a red brown here. Many more red. You can pour it directly in, into your plate or on the well. Okay, and at the end, because after we've colored it, we've covered some of the white spaces that it had originally. So take some pure white, try not to mix it around much and just um, dab it with the white. So the white is still pure and you can still see it on the painting. Okay. All right, that looks good. Wash my brush. Let's do the trees. The trees here, it's for blue, green, white. That's what I see. It's a darker green. So a darker blue green here, and then dark green, and then light green, and then on the very edge of the uh, trees, white, quite white. Still got some blue in, in on my palette, so I'm gonna put it on. I'm gonna try to mix, let's see. I'll start with the lighter colors first, so I'm gonna try to make the light parts on the edge. So I need white. I've still got some green from before, so I'll see if I can use part of this. It's like a turquoise color, so my brush already had some blue in it. That's okay. More white. Okay, let's try to do... 
try to do the edges here. So I'm just gonna sharpen my sharpen my paintbrush again because I've been dabbing it so much that the fiber is kind of frayed. So just make sure you get to a nice point again. All right. Do the back here that's more white with a hint of green and, and blue. Okay, so once you have the more like the lightest layer, it starts getting a bit darker. So you can just take some of your blues, take some of your green. And keep going on to the next layer. I can see that my color is a bit more green than what they have. That one's more blue. So now I'm gonna add some more blue to make it match. Well, these are much more blue, so. Keep adjusting your color. And then there's like some washed out color here because it is a watercolor painting. So I'm gonna get just water with the brush and just kind of Leave some water here so that the paint starts to fade and um, fade up. Okay, so this bigger tree. Let's do on this side as well so the painting looks more balanced. So they've got some green on top, light green. Green and yellow here. Okay, then move on to a darker green. blue blue maybe some black as well for the so these parts now you see at the very bottom they're quite dark dark uh, dark blue a bit hint of purple so let me see if I can add a bit of red in it so it's like a violet, violet kind of blue. So try some red. All right. And then we're gonna do the, the darkest parts.
just checking my color to see if I have a hint of green in it. darker so it needs a bit more black this side as well. Then a lighter, lighter blue. Once in a while, sit back and take a look at your painting, see if you want to add anything or if you're missing anything. Okay, so a clean brush. So on this side, I think I'm missing a bit of a turquoise. Turquoise and a light green, it looks like. Okay, and then add on the white that we uh, covered. We covered some white spaces, so we can add it back on. Wash your brush, because now I need more pure white. Pure white. Okay, and that's the trees. Okay, take a look at your painting. What else would you want to add to it? It's okay to go over the line. So for example, this one, I made the tree just a little bit taller because I was blending it, but it's okay. It's a bit taller than what the original painting had. So I'm, I'm washing it out kind of like watercolor and I kind of like that. It's like a far away shadow. And then I didn't pre-plan this. I just did it and it looked pretty good. So kept going. All right. Same on the same with this side. Okay, so I think the last thing I'm gonna do for this painting is um, the building there at the back. Again, it's the same purple blue color. So I had some here. I'm gonna try to add more red to it to make it a bit more purple. Okay, I'm going to do just the darker parts here. There's some purple in the trees too, so that's why I'm dabbing it also, even though it's not exactly part of the building, but it's the same color.
As you go down the building, the color is getting lighter. You can add some white, but also it also looks like just watered out. So I'm adding some white and water. Okay, try to leave some of the window space. Don't cover the window. But if you do, just add more white. Make the, make the white space again. Okay, I'm painting around the windows. Blending, trying to blend everything together. Blend it down. So this is a tree there that's blocking the building. So don't um, paint purple over that. I'll add a bit more green because that's our blue green here. That's what it had. So at this point, I'm just painting with water because I want the watercolor effect and I want the colors to blend in here because when you look at a painting or a photo, the things in the background are very blurry. All right, up here as well. Water and a bit of the uh, blue-green you had before. And as you fade out, more water. Okay, there's a bit of color left on your brush, right? So when you add water, um, it will just have a faded effect. Blah, 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 blah. Ah, and then at this point, I'm gonna use my um, paper towel technique again. Yeah, that's, okay, blends in very nicely. Gives you that misty look in the shadows. Okay, and I think this Deer of Nara is complete. So here's mine. Everybody's is a little bit different. Use your creativity, use your artistic skills, use your imagination. So here's mine, Deer of Nara. Okay, at the end, just don't forget to sign your name. You're the artist. So, a bit of black here. My name's Alexis, so I'm gonna write Alexis here. Now here's, so here's my masterpiece. I can't wait to see yours.